are on a course for disaster that even by their own admission in 10 years will have 25 trillion in debt that our national debt service by their estimates which i think are optimistic or over a trillion a year the size of government uh, has increased by fourfold adjusted for inflation since i was in junior high et cetera, et cetera. and in short i would spend about a half hour an hour uh, explaining why i think we are headed in 100 percent the wrong direction now does anybody disagree with any of that the reason i mention all that is it dawned on me after the election when we lost that I'm kind of wasting my time. Because every group I talk to agrees. So if you want, I can spend 30 or 40 minutes talking about why we believe what we do. Or, and I'll leave it up to you, because I don't speak with notes, and I'll kind of let you decide which direction this speech goes. We can talk about why we lost and what we can do about it. What would you rather prefer? Why we lost? All right. And what we can do about it. Now, I will tell you this. If as I go along you have a question or if there's something else you want to answer, I'm happy to answer any question. Now, like the first time I tried that, I told people, look, I'm just going to start talking about some things I think you would think would interest you. By the way, is this mic working okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I, so I said, so if you have a question, you know, just at any time, just raise up. As soon as I stopped saying that, the man raised his hand. So let me go five or ten minutes and get going. <laughs> and I'll talk about some things that I think are of interest to you. Uh, and before I start, this comes with a warning. There, it's the same warning that I have on my desk. On my desk, I had a sign made. And it reads, if you're not ready for my honest opinion, please don't ask. So I assume that since you asked me to come speak, you really want to hear what my opinion is, whether you agree with it or not, right? Oh, yes. So I'm going to have a frank talk. Some of it you might agree with. Some of it, I'm just warning you, I may step on some of your toes. I am not a shy person. Because I'm going to talk to you about some things that I think are real challenges for the conservative movement the Republican Party. And the first part may frankly depress some of y'all. But, but bear with me and there, there will be a ray of hope in there. So let me start by asking this. How many people thought Romney had a pretty good chance of winning? Raise your hand. How many people were shocked the American people could return Barack Obama to the White House? <coughs> All right. Why? Why were you shocked? Let me give you some statistics. And let me preface this by saying that two years ago, I spoke to the Republican National Committee Southern Caucus and presented charts on the demographic changes of our country. And I said at that time, before the election, that I had looked at the data of what had been happening in past elections, how our country is changing, how our party has failed to get into every community, and that I thought it was probable that in the near term, the Republican Party would not win another presidential election. And if we didn't do a better job of reaching every corner of America, it was a statistical certainty we wouldn't win. Now, before you say, well, what's he talking about? Let me give you some things you might not have thought about. Well, let me just ask this. Any Aggies in the room? Okay, I'm going to go real slow on the math. <laughs> I had to put that in there. <laughs> okay, you Aggies, if a, if a if a team is if a team is one in five, do you fire the coach, or, or you think you got a losing record? Do you? Let me put it this way: If you're one in five, do you think you're probably going to win the next game in all probability? Depends on where the Manziel is playing. Well, that's true, and, and we should have signed them. I'll give you that. We should sign them. Do you realize we've lost five of the last six popular votes? We've lost five of the last six. Why did we think we were going to win? Let me give you some other numbers. There are 18 states in the union that have not gone Republican since Ronald Reagan was president a quarter century ago. Those 18 states have 
gone Democratic six presidential elections in a row. Would you agree that there's a pretty good likelihood that if you've lost six out of six, you shouldn't be optimistic about the seven? Does that seem fair? Yes. Do you know what the total electoral votes of those 18 states are? 240. 270 is to win. Am I registering here? Is this surprising people? No. Yeah. This, the country has been going democratic because, and I'll get to this in a moment, because we're losing huge, by huge margins in the minority community. That's just a fact. People may not want to hear it, but that's just a fact. And for those of you that think that will change, there's no indication that any of those 18 states are going to go back Republican next time. So what does that mean for the future? That means you get one state like Texas to switch, they win. You get two small states, they win. We are already in a position, until we do some things long term to change who votes Republican, we are already in a position, we have to run the tables. We have to win virtually every swing state. And the other side only has to win one or two. So I ask you again, why did anybody think Romney was going to win? Now, for those that think, well, there's a pendulum that it will swing back, really? As, let me give you something to, pen, to ponder. From 1932 to 1964, nine presidential elections, the Republican Party lost seven of nine. The only two we won was President Eisenhower, who thought about running as a Democrat. Had he run as a Democrat, we would have been 0 for 9. So this idea that pendulums swing back is wrong. When I was growing up, I started my first election in 72. That's 41 years ago. I never thought we'd control government again. And so for those that think, well, it will just swing back, no. <laughs> the other side can get control for a very long time. I don't mean to depress you. I'm just telling you the truth. Congress. 1954 to 1992, 38 years controlled by the Democrats. What about Texas? Well, uh, in 1968, there was a, a, a whopping four Republicans. In, in 74, there were 13. The Democrats, are y'all hearing me? The Democrats can get a run where they can control things until I'm either very old or dead. I'm just being honest with you. Because they've been, they were able to do it for a very long stretch. What changed all that? What was the single greatest factor that changed the trajectory of our country? Reagan. You got it! It took an unbelievable leader to change the trajectory. So I would tell you, if you really want to change your country, the battle is the White House. You're not going to be able to undo any of the damage that President Obama and this Congress has done without getting the White House. Just won't happen. Even if you have the House and the Senate, if you don't have the White House, they're going to veto it. So if you accept that premise, None of this terrible course is going to be changed unless we take the White House. So I would suggest to you that if you really want to change this country, the single most important thing you can do right now is focus on what we do as a party to win in 2016, because that may be the last time in my lifetime we have a small opportunity to win. I'm not exaggerating, folks. So. As we look at 2016, we need to look at 2012 and earlier and see why we lost to see if there are any lessons. That seem fair? All right. You cannot, I'm just going to put this, yes, ma'am. Sure. Oh, I'll talk about that. Yeah.
Sure. That, that's all part of it. You have to have your base. But let me give you some things to ponder. Let's just take the state of Texas. In 26 and a half years, three out of four Texans will be traditional minority. Right. You understand what I just said? Mm -hmm. So if, if you're not getting a high percentage of the minority vote, and 75% of your state is traditional minority, and your base is almost exclusively white, I'm just being honest with you, if your base is exclusively white, you can get 100% of the vote, and you've only got 50% of what you need. You cannot win. You can't, but no one's talking about changing principles. I'm talking about taking our principles out to other communities. Now, I may offend somebody here, and I'm just gonna, but I'm, that's how I am. I'm just a straight talker. If you wanna see what's wrong with our party or our challenges, Look at any Republican meeting. Look at this meeting. Do we look like the rest of the state? We don't. I'm just being honest with you. I say this at Republican meetings. Anybody want to know what we're doing wrong? Go to any Republican meeting, stand on a chair, turn 360 degrees, go out to any major urban area, do the same thing, and does the outside look like the inside? No. Does it? No. I'm just talking to you straight. It doesn't. But that, you know, that's the problem. Those others don't care, but they're going to vote if they get something free, and they get on. Well, well, hold on a second. Well, that's, that's when you say the others, it's like you're saying that well, minorities are not in this meeting. Oh yeah, but, but the minority. No, I just reject the idea that minorities are any less free loving or any less have the same values that we do. We can't make that argument when we haven't been in their communities to talk to them. If we believe that free enterprise, the Constitution, capitalism, and freedom are good enough for one community, it's good enough for all the communities. Yeah. It is. <laughs> what you may not know, what do you think the average Republican got in the state of Texas, for example, from the Hispanic community over the last 10 years? Anybody want to guess? It's like 15, 15, 20%. 15%. Anybody else want to guess? 40%. No, no, I'm, I'm, the average Republican, This go check it. Go to Gardner Shelby, political fact check, Austin American Statesman. I made the statement we've been averaging 40%. Carl Rove made the statement in Georgia. He made me real popular out there because he took what I was saying and told the Georgia Republican Party if they wanted to do, know what to do, come to Texas where we were getting 40%. And political fact check, check that. Now, let me tell you what they did, and let me preface this by saying, but by the way, is it going to shock anybody when I give you a story about media bias? No. <laughs> I just didn't want to break anybody's illusions about the free press. I made a statement about a year ago where I said the media doesn't coverage how well we do in Texas with the minority community, that we have elected as the Republican Party more African Americans and more Hispanic Americans to statewide office than the Democrats, and I never see that written anywhere. I know. Right. Right. Y'all see that article? No. no. By the way, did y'all see the article that we elected a record number of Hispanics last time? No. Uh -uh. Would it surprise you to know that we increased the number of Republican elected officials statewide from 58 to 78 just in the last election cycle? Wow. 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 That is. No coverage. No. <clears throat> so. They call me and they say, what is your backup for making the statement you've elected more minorities? Well, I've got I to confess something. I am really good about fact-checking things. Except in this one instance I heard that in a speech and I repeated it. So when they called me, I had an uh-oh moment. I sure hope that speech was right. So I had my staff go research it and we found all the documentation and I sent it to Gardner Shelby, who came back and said that the statement was mostly true. Oh, okay. How can that be mostly true? It's either true or it's not true. Simple mathematics, right? You know what their reasoning was? And this just teaches you how we have to battle the press all the time. It said I was misleading because I didn't mention the fact that Republicans had controlled the state for the last 20 years, so the Democrats hadn't had the opportunity to elect any minorities. Uh, what? What? <laughs> we, we stopped?
stop ignoring the fact they controlled the state from the 1880s to 1994. Right. Now I tell you that story because you now know that mostly true when applied to a Republican means true. 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 So I made the statement, and then it was repeated, that we had 40%, and Gardner Shelby, go Google it, it's a great article, it has all the polls and exit data on it, and what did he rule about the statement that the Texas Republican Party gets 40% of the Hispanic vote? He said it was? Mostly true. Mostly true, which means it really is? True. True. <laughs> it's a very surprising. You might be surprised to find out that in two elections in a row, in 2000, 2004, George W. Bush got 49% of the Hispanic vote in Texas. It's only eight years ago. Or that Senator Hutchison, I didn't even know this, got over 50% of the Hispanic vote. Wow. So when we talk about them, them is us. We've got the Hispanic vote in the past. George W. Bush got 44% of it nationwide when running for president. Now let me explain why this is so important, and anybody wants to see later, I have the charts. In 1976, 89% of all voters were Caucasian. Nine out of 10. When Reagan ran the second time in 76. In 2004, I'm sorry, in 2008, the percentage of Caucasian voters nationwide had dropped from 89% to 74%. 2012, it dropped another 2% to 72%. These little differences make a huge difference when nationally we lost 80% of the minority vote. Because just think about that. You got 2% there, right? That change in 2%. We lose 80%. That means 1.6 is voting for the other side. Only 0.4 is voting for our side. That's a difference of 1.2. Are y'all following me on this? Mm -hmm. Guess what we lost the election by? 3.8%. So those little changes over time, over two or three election cycles, is the entire difference between what Romney got. Let me put it a different way. If the demographics of the country today were what they were when Reagan got reelected in 88, Romney wins in a landslide. Absolutely. That's just a fact. You can take it and work it out. So, as we look into the future, we have to say, you know, what, what's ahead if we don't change? Let, let me give you some other things to pop. Yes, sir. A uh, question. On election night, were you and your staff surprised? No. Uh, I, I will tell you that up until the first debate, I said there's no way Romney was going to win privately. The first debate... I'll just be honest, I, I'm trying to use nice language, thought he kicked his, I, I thought he won the debate. There you go, there you go. And I thought Obama looked so bad we were going to get another look. So I, at that point, I thought, hey, this race is getting close. <clears throat> and then I'm on these RNC calls, and they're saying their polls say that we're ahead. So I was surprised a little bit in the sense that the RNC kept saying we were going to win, but when I think about it, a year and a half earlier, I told them there was virtually no way we were going to win. Now let's talk a little bit more about the base. How many people think more Republicans showed up last time than the time before? No, no, no. They did. See, that's the thing, I've got the statistics right here from the Federal National Archives Federal Register. Yes, sir. Well, didn't uh, uh, Romney, uh, he got fewer votes than McCain? No, sir. I got it right here. I'll, I'll read you the top. And, and let me tell you the confusion. Isn't this interesting, by the way? Yeah. People think Republicans turned out in less numbers. Totally untrue. Totally untrue. Now, I will tell you, it's hard to get the numbers because the media reported different numbers when we started. And then I looked, because they do it on estimates. They don't do it on canvas. Then I looked at, like, two canvases, and I'll just tell them myself and say I gave wrong numbers because uh, the canvas figures on the Internet were wrong. So then somebody asked me for a site, and I realized that different websites had different numbers. So then I went to what I thought would be the ultimate source. If anybody wants to write this down, it's the www.archives. Well, it's long. I'll give it to you afterwards. But it's Federal Register National Archives. 
And there they had on file each state's, each state's individual um, certificate of cannabis. So I saw the actual certificates of cannabis. And what does that reveal? It reveals that Romney got 60,589,084 votes. And John McCain got 59,950, 59,950,323. So surprise, Republican turnout was not down. That is a myth. So the idea that our base didn't turn out, numbers don't support it. Now, yes, sir. Y'all hear his question? Yes. 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 It's certainly true that in any election, you're going to have some side from one go from one to the other. And I'm not discounting that there are some Democrats we could have gotten. I'm not discounting there are some Republicans that sat home. I'm just saying the net effect of it all was at the end of the day, we turned out more Republicans than we ever have uh, in, in the last two elections. What's that? More votes, but at the end of the day, that's what you're trying to get is more votes. But didn't you hear on the didn't, didn't you hear on the news media that Republicans were turned guy yes. less? Yes. Yes. yes, yes. That's a myth. Here's another myth. It was a mandate for Obama. No. Well, I know we don't believe that, but did you hear that in the media? Yes. I kept hearing about you know this is the public has totally spoke. Have y'all heard this? No. Let me put this in perspective. What did Obama get? Obama got 65,899,660. But what did he get four years earlier? He got 69,499,428, which means Obama got 3,851,965 less votes than he did four years ago, according to the National Archives, which are the official records. So how can you be a mandate when you get four million less votes? Yes, sir. Again, now you have a four million swing. That sounds very familiar to the first numbers you gave us. No, the, the, the first numbers are... 59, 60. I'll just give them to you again. In 2008, Obama got 69,499,428. In 2012, Obama got 65,446,032. 2008, McCain got 59,950,323. In 2012, Romney got 60,589,084. Another way to look at it is Democrats were down 4 million, Republicans were up 1 million. Flies in the face of what you heard, isn't it? And don't you hear about the Democrats vaulted machine and the digital and they turned out everybody? They turned out four million less. Let me give you some other numbers. The percentage breakdown, 51.1% Romney, 47.2% McCain. But that means 49, roughly 49% of the public voted against President Obama. Now to me, 51, 49 is not a mandate, especially for an incumbent president. If it is, why didn't they start talking about Reagan having a mandate the first time he beat Carter? Because it was by a wider margin than that. That's not a tail whipping. A tail whipping is when our nominee in 1964 only got 38%. Then you can say we got a tail whipping. 51-49 is not a tail whipping. That's why there's some good news in this. We, you know, we have a chance to win in 2006. But I want to talk to you about some misconceptions that are out there. Now, let me tell you about what little changes, little changes in how we do in the minority vote makes us win elections. And how not only can we achieve that, and we can win in 2016, but we have done these things. African American votes are roughly one out of every 10 votes. Depending on which poll you look at, we got between four and 6%. So let's say 5%. If we had gotten 15%, 
That's a difference of 10% of 10% of the electric. So 10% times 10% is 1%. Y'all follow me? Mm -hmm. Let's let the Aggies catch up. No. Okay. Oh, that's the last joke, I promise. I can't do this in Central Texas. I tried and they all hiss and boo. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and, and, and you'll be happy to know that I accepted $3,000 for the Harris County Republican Party from a contributor who would only do it if I would put a picture of Kevin Sumlin next to my desk for 365 days a year. So if you go to my office, there's a picture of Kevin Sumlin next to my desk. Awesome. Somebody said awesome, let's not get carried away. All right, so 10% times 10% is 1%. But it's really not 1%, right? Because if you take 1% away from the other side and you add it to yours, it's two. Okay? So that means if we had gotten 15% of the African American vote, that's by two. Nationally, we only got 27% of the Hispanic vote. They're roughly one out of 10 of our votes. So if you'd gotten 37% instead of 27%, that's another two. Two plus two equals four. Y'all with me? What did we lose by? 3.8. All we had to do is get 37% of the Hispanic vote and 15% of the African American vote and President Romney would be in there. Mm -hmm. That's why this is important. That's why little changes on the margin make a difference and they're gonna make a bigger difference. Now, is that possible? Of course it's possible. We've done it. George Herbert Walker Bush used to get 15, 20% of the African American vote. What happened? I think I know because I was in the party and I was, at consultant meetings and at meetings where people said, do not campaign in the African American community. You'll stir up the Democratic vote. Anybody hear that? Oh, yeah. yeah. And they would say, the Democrats are getting 80% of, of the vote. How much worse could it get? Well, guess what? Went from 20 to 15 to 12 to 10, it's fine. it can get worse. And that 10% makes a huge difference. Now let me give you some optimism. Our African American auxiliary, Tifro, got some polling results from the national organization. African American males under the age of 35, 20% voted for Romney. 46% of African Americans under the age of 35 said they would consider voting Republican. Now once you get to older African Americans, 40, 50, 60, it almost goes down to zero. But it's hope for the future. But what can you expect will not happen if you don't go to a community and have your candidates ask for their vote? What will happen? You don't get it! This stuff is not tough! And yet, well, you gotta ask, you gotta be there. Are we there? No. George Bush spent 50 million on minority outreach. He got 44% of Hispanic vote. McCain, a couple million reportedly. He got 35%. Romney reportedly half a million, he got 27%. Meanwhile, in Texas, our percentage of the Hispanic vote went up. If it hadn't gone up, we would be losing elections now. Let me give you some numbers to illustrate this. In 2006, the percentage of Anglo votes in the state of Texas were 75%. Today it's 68%, I mean in 2010. That's a drop of 7% just in four years. The percentage in Texas uh, of the Anglo vote was 66% in 2008, 63% uh, in 2000, uh, I'm sorry, 2004, 63% in 2008, 58% in the presidential for 2012. That's a fancy way of saying the Caucasian vote in Texas is significantly shrinking every election. However, the Republican Party is winning by wider margins in the last two election cycles. How can that be? There's only one of two ways that can be. You either get a much higher percentage of the Anglo vote, but we're already way up there in the Anglo vote, so it's not reasonable to think we're getting any more. Or, the only other logical explanation, which we really think is happening, is we actually increased our percentage in the Hispanic community, and the Ted Cruz numbers where he got 40% plus, that came from a poll that we did with Ted Cruz and John Cornyn. We all split the cost three ways. 
Before, I wasn't allowed to talk about it, but since Senator Cruz is talking about it, I think that means it's okay, right? It's a Wilson Perkins Allen poll. It showed the worst of our ticket was Romney, did about 36%. And Cruz looked like he was over 40%. And raw respondents, he was over 50%. What does that mean? It means when you just ask people who they voted for, 38% said they voted for Cruz and 36% said they voted for Sadler and the rest wouldn't say. But that means the people that actually responded, he got over 50%. So it was a reasonable assumption to say that out of the quarter of the vote, that wouldn't tell you how he voted, he certainly got at least one out of 10 of those. Y'all following me? Sure. So that means he got over 40%. So we're getting over 40% of the vote. We just need to keep it. If the national party had done that, we would win elections. And it's becoming even more important because as we head out into the future, 40 years from now, I probably won't be alive, but for those of you who are 20 or 30, you will be, there will be no minorities in this country. In 40 years, there will be no group that has over 50%. So if 50% or more of the country is traditional minorities, how can you win elections if you're losing 80%, which we are now, of 50% of the population? Right. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. In Texas, it's even more extreme. If, if you look, and I have charts up here that, that I can show y'all, if you look, for example, at the percentage of traditional minorities that are under the age of five in Texas today, everybody five years and younger, 69% are traditional minorities. So just use logic. Seven out of every 10 children you know, from toddler to first grade are traditional minorities. Seven out of ten. So that's your future in 20, 30 years. You can't lose that group. So what do we need to do about it? What's the party need to do? What's the national party need to do? Well, there's a couple of things. First of all, we need to get back in every neighborhood and not have the Democrats and the media define what we are. They define us as being the party for the rich, that we're just trying to defend rich people. That's what every survey shows. That's when we polled Hispanic voters, the number one unfavorable in Texas was to us. By the way, let me give you some good news. Out of the Hispanic voters, Texans of Hispanic descent, that just voted in the 2012 election, according to Wilson Perkins poll, 44% self-identified as conservative. Only 18% self-identified as liberal. Two and a half to one. And yet, when you ask if they're Democrat or Republican, we are losing on that. How can that be? Well, we asked them. What's the number reason, one reason why you're unfavorable to the Republican Party? The answer basically was you're the party of rich white people. But when we asked every individual item on issues, on the vast majority of issues on the platform. The majority of Hispanic voters took the Republican position when compared to the Democrat position. You might have heard Ted Cruz talking about that, I think I understood him right, that he considered a guest worker program that, that the poll showed that, that you don't need to do a, guest, a path to citizenship. And he cited that poll. Senator Cruz said, we polled Hispanics in Texas and they overwhelmingly supported a guest worker program, not a path to citizenship. Guess what? It's the poll we did with them. What did it show? It showed that immigration was the seventh most important issue. Only 3% of Hispanic Texans put it as number one. And when asked if you support a program with uh, criminal background checks, you only hear for for work purposes, you, you do it legally, and if you want to be a citizen, you get to the back of the line. Majority of Hispanics supported that. That's right. Now, if you said, and I'm just talking among family here, I just want to tell you, if you said, instead of doing that, you just want to round up and send everybody home, it went off the charts, never ever vote Republican. I'm just telling you what it said. So, but you don't have to guarantee a path to citizenship. Oh, by the way, it also had a border security in there. Favored border security. So on the issues, Hispanic voters said they agreed with us. But they didn't vote with us over 50%. We got about 40%, which is 
good compared to the rest of the country. But we should be getting 60% if two and a half to one say they're conservative. We need to be in these neighborhoods. We need to be out there. And if we do that, we can win in 2016. So what's the party doing? What's the state party doing? What's the national party doing? And, and let me give you some good news. Because I started this off with some bad news. But let me give you some good news. <clears throat> the good news is, first of all, our state, by paying attention the last two election cycles to trying to increase our share of the Hispanic vote, a Asian American vote, and African American vote, Romney won the state by two points more than McCain. More importantly, by the way, I should back up and just ask, did y'all think this was a solidly Republican state? No. Let me ask you this. In what year did Democrats lose the majority of offices in the state? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I thought you had your hand up. 94. 94, 2000. Do I hear higher? 2008. <laughs> Through the 2008 elections, yeah. Democrats held 2,800 seats to 2,400 for the Republicans. Wow. Surprise some people? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this state was already about to tip Democratic. In 2008, 2,800 Democrats, 2,400 Republicans. The Texas House was split what? 76-74. Does that sound like a state we're dominating? In 2006, we lost Dallas County. Have never got it back. Lost it again in 2008. 2008, we lost Harris County. So you're losing Dallas County. You're losing Harris County. You're losing Bear County. You're losing Travis County. Again, I'm giving you all some tough love here. The future is not in the rural areas in terms of population growth, and our party is losing the urban areas. Now... In 2006, the bottom of our statewide ticket barely averaged a little over 51%. Does that sound like a landslide state? And for anybody that thought that was an aberration, we were at the same spot in 2008. Now the good news, since 2008, we've raised that 51 to uh, 55 in 2010, 54 in 2012, which I think is good considering it was a democratic year. We have added, we added 575 net office holders between 2008 and 2010, and we've added another, 2000, another 278 just since 2010, despite it being a democratic year. So as I sit here today, there are 853 more Republicans elected statewide than just two election cycles ago in 2008. We've gone from 51% to mid-50s. And we've gone from 58 Hispanics to 78. And I'd also like to point out that those were the last two election cycles where I was chairman. <laughs> All right? So 853. <laughs> so 1% of the offices in the state are held by Republicans. And just five years ago, we only had 43%. Does that surprise anybody? Yeah. This state is a battleground. And anybody that doesn't think it is is fooling themselves. If you went to realclearpolitics.com, they did not have Texas in the solid column last time. They had a lean Republican. I went on WFAA and, and debated Marvin Frost. Anybody y'all remember him, the congressman? <laughs> y'all gonna love this story. Because he debated me in 2010 elections that the Democrats would take control of the Texas House in 2010. Oh. They were predicting it then. Y'all hear about Battleground Texas, that's the best thing that ever happened to us because they just publicized what they've already been doing. There's a group called the Lone Star Project and a lawyer by the name of Steve Moyston. Uh, and the Lone Star Project was funded by another law firm, Baron Budd, that has poured millions and millions and millions of dollars through various front groups in the state. Organizing for America, Obama, they've already been here. They listed seven offices on their website in 2012. I called the RNC and said, you sure we're winning this state? <laughs> They've got offices here. And they said, yeah, we are. I even drove by the one in Austin to see if it was a real office. It was. <laughs> so if they're working here and they know they're not going to win the state, why are they working here for the future? That's right. They were already. So Frost, he jumped the gun. He bet me on WFAA 
that the Democrats would pay, take the House two years ago. I bet him a steak dinner wherever he wanted to go. I'm not for gambling, by the way, but I think this one was an exception because I wanted to make a point. <laughs> so I bet him that we would have a net gain of five. We ended up having a net gain of 22. He has not paid off. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that's like a Democrat, isn't it? <laughs> he wants the handout if he won, believe me, and he wanted me to pay the bill, but when it's time for And less people say, well, he might have forgot. I actually ran into, I think it was Calvin Watkins of the Dallas Morning News, and I'm telling him this story. And he said, well, I know Marvin. I'll, I'll uh, email him and remind him he owe him a steak dinner. Still haven't got the steak dinner. <laughs> the battleground Texas guys have done the biggest favor that they ever could because for three years I've been on the RNC and I've been a big critic of it. Some of you may or may not know this, that the Texas delegation was 32 miles from the convention. You all know that? Right. Or that we were in the back of the convention hall with an obstructed view from the media platform. They only do that when they're punishing people. Yes. I was only one of four of 168 RNC members that voted against the RNC budget. It was my first meeting. I was going to go and be quiet. Because you should be quiet at your first meeting or everybody hates you if you're the new guy that talks. It's just true. Take my word for it. That's a tip for politics. Yes, right? yes exactly. And I was about as popular up there as he was with some of the Democrats. So I was going to be quiet, and I went to the budget meeting, and I'm looking at their numbers, and my degree is in finance. I've run home businesses for 20 years. And I'm like, that didn't balance. So I went to Michael Steele, and they, they threw a big party for me. It was a welcome party. as a new member of the cigar party. He came up to me. He's a big man, like 6'5", big voice, smoking. So, Steve, you're having a great time? And this is why I was unpopular. I said, no, I'm having a terrible time. He said, why? I said, I want you, the budget's unbalanced. Y'all run this like the federal government. You're going to be 16, 17 million in debt. He said, oh, no, we are. I said, yes, you are. It doesn't match. And y'all voted to borrow $10 million. He said, I didn't support that. He didn't know I was in the room because I wasn't on the committee. I said, I just looked at him. I said, I've only known you for 24 hours, and you've lied to me twice during this conversation. <laughs> That somebody actually has a pic took a picture of me poking my finger up because he's so much taller than I. And they had kind of, it wasn't a physical alteration, but they did come and staff came to separate. Because he said to me, finally he said to me, what did you expect me to do? Everybody wanted it because they pay off states this way. I said, what I wanted you to do, if you think it's irresponsible to leave the next RNC millions of dollars in debt, how about saying so, showing some leadership, and if you go down, you go down in defeat. But you cannot be the head of a national party that says we're a balanced budget, and you can't balance your own budget. Amen. So I was so... <laughs> I was going to speak, and they said, and, and they had a good point, but it was mainly a bluff. I wanted to make my point. And all the press is there. You don't want to publicize we're in terrible financial shape right before the election. But I let them sweat for a while. So, and I thought I'd be the only one to vote against it. <clears throat> so one of my cohorts said to me, God, you're going to embarrass our state. And I, I said, if you vote with me, so I'm not the only person that votes against, I won't get up and make a speech to embarrass the Republican Party. <laughs> but I want at least the majority of the Texas delegation to vote against this. And I was surprised we got four votes. It was two of us from Texas, uh, the, the treasurer who thought that there was a scandal, and uh, some person in the back that sh shocked me. Now, I was wrong. We were not 17 million in the hole. At the end, we were 26 million That's in the hole. Right. That's what I thought. Yeah. And I did hold my tongue when the new treasurer said, you'll be shocked. We were shocked to find out we were so much in debt. The credit cards all bounced. How could have anybody have known this? <laughs> so I've been very critical of the RNC. I've been critical of the fact that they sucked out $41 million from us in six years from Texas, gave $400,000 back when I think we're a battleground state. Right. That the Romney campaign took out $75 million and didn't even have an office here from the state of Texas. So having been critical, I have to give them credit when they finally done things. For two and a half years, I said, you need to pay attention to Texans. Any of y'all ever play Capture the Flag? Uh -huh. 
It doesn't matter how, what you're doing on the front lines. If somebody comes and gets back and captures your flag, you follow me? I'm saying they're trying to capture your flag. If they get taxes, it's all over. You all need to be preparing now. The other side is down here. So the RNC, and this is where Battleground Texas did the best. They did something that I couldn't do for three years. They convinced the RNC that Texas is competitive. And so now we are getting help. So I will say Chairman Priebus is doing what no other RNC chairman has done. There are several things I want it done. I think it's terrible, this idea we open up a victory center and then shut it down. We run it for three months and come back in two years. That's not what the Democrats do. They're in 50 states year-round with staff. That's how they turned all these states. Anybody follow history? You know how like the communists took over Vietnam? They do a generation over a long term. You, you start and you keep after it. That's what the... I'm going to get in trouble for comparing the Democrats to the Vietnamese <laughs> communists, but... Hey, if the shoe fits. Uh, uh, exactly. But we need to be doing what they did over time, over attrition. We need to be in their states, just like they're in our states. We need to be in their states, mm -hmm. trying to turn this thing around. And we need to defend our home turf. So we need year-round victory centers, year-round staff. We need to be in these communities, the Hispanic community, the Asian American community. Let me give you some statistics that will blow your mind. 20 years ago, we got 70% of the Asian American vote. 20 years later, we lost 77%. And the fastest growing group in Texas is Asian Americans, 5.3% to, excuse me, 3.3 3 to 5.5 in the last 10 years. One out of every 19 and a half of your neighbors is now of Asian descent. 26 years from now, the Asian American population in Texas will equal the African American population in Texas. Wow. Yes, sir. Why are we losing the Asian folks? Well, we asked them. Because we, I went in, I, I set up meetings with Commissioner Wynn, Martha Wong, Stephen Fong. And the simplest way for me to put it, what they told me, was just they said, last week there was an event at Asian Cultural Center down in Fort Bend. 18 elected officials were there. All 18 were Democrat. You guys aren't there. So we think you don't care about us. That's a good point. So one of the things we've been trying to do is get our elected officials to go to the meetings. Fort Bend County, one of the largest counties that's been Republican. It's now 25% African American, 25% Hispanic, 25 Anglo, and 25% Asian. The set. You can, you, we've got to be in those communities. And if we're not there defining what we believe in, the Democrats will be there. And what they define us as racist yes. for, the, for the rich. Yes. Uh, that, you know, we're, we're, we're trying, I mean, he, you think I'm making this stuff up? I'm not. There, there was a Democratic mailing in Texas in Spanish with a picture of Obama, and I have a Hispanic director that I asked to, to interpret for me, and it basically said, and I'm paraphrasing, but it basically said, you know, the Republican Party is racist, you know, stand with uh, another minority against, you know, and this was paid for by the Texas Democratic Party. They're in these neighborhoods telling people, we, we don't, we don't want Hispanics or African Americans or Asians in our, in our party. So here's the good news, <clears throat> and I'll, I'll wrap up because it's kind of like, did anybody watch uh, the Apollo Theater show? Yeah. At Comedy Night at the Apollo, oh, okay. if you're not doing well, they have this guy with the big hook cut. Yeah. And when you, so I see the hook. I see the hook. <laughs> and by the way, I'm happy to hang around and answer these and show you charts and everything else. Maybe you have time for a question or two before I go. But here's the good news on all of this. We hired a full-time person to work the Hispanic community, uh, David Zapata. Passionate guy. And the RNC has given us the okay to hire 21 field staff and open up eight offices around the state. Yay. We're going to start four by the end of uh, uh, this summer and four early next year. And we're going to have people working the Asian American community, African American community, Hispanic community. We're going to have people that are running victory centers. We just chartered our first Asian American group. I made a promise that we'd hire an Asian American director. We did, a Rice graduate. These are passionate young people that don't believe the Democratic Party represents their values. And we're going to be in those communities. We made a concerted effort to identify Hispanic Republican households and turn them out for the state convention. There were over 600 new Hispanic delegates at the state convention. And that translated into 
increased support for elected officials. As I said, we had 58 to 78. We have four now chartered Hispanic Republican groups statewide. We have an African American group that's identified 200,000 African American families that have either voted in the Republican primary or never voted in a Democratic primary but vote in the general and their magazine subscriptions and other things indicate that they're conservative. And we're gonna go after every single vote. Because if, if we believe that we are standing up for the values of America that has to be the values of all America, and we can do it without changing a single principle. We just have to bring our principles to every corner of the state. Right. And if we do that, and do that year round, we can hold, and I'll give you this final thought. If there ever is a group of people that can change the outcome of the country, it's here. Because we have 38 electoral votes. If those change, it's a difference of 76. We're going to get two more in seven years. That's going to be a change of 80. This will be ground zero. Now, some people are scared of that. Some people are wringing their hands about that. I love it. Because I'm tired of all the action being in Ohio and Florida and New Hampshire and Iowa. We could become the most important state for the Republican Party to take the White House back. And let the Democrats come and spend their money down here so that it frees up money in Ohio and Florida and other places. Because I am absolutely convinced that we're not only on the right side, but because we've had conservative government more or less here that's worked, that that is the best recipe for success is results. And with your help, we can do it. But it starts today, and we've got to take back the White House in 2016. And who we pick as our nominee, I think, will be the single most important factor. And I'm going to step on some toes here, probably get in some trouble, and say we've had some nominees that have fallen short. Good men. But personally, Bob Dole, John McCain, Mitt Romney are not the best articulators of the conservative philosophy. Yeah.